Hi, this is Wayne with Bass Row Woodworking. I'm going to do a quick shop tour. This is going to be a quick overview of the different tools and machines I have in my wood shop. We're going to start with my Craftsman 113 table saw. This is a 10 inch table saw. I received it from my father when he moved. I have since replaced the fence, built the cabinet underneath, and I have swapped the motor to put a two horsepower motor from Grizzly. This is my LP table. I have it just set a little bit lower than the table saw. I've also, it's where I keep all of my hardware, um, my homemade vise, and my router table. I have this entire table on retractable casters so that I can move it around when I need to. This is my pre-war Craftsman lathe. Um, near as I can tell, it is a mid-1930s model. It is mounted on the base to a Shopsmith Mark V and I have a custom-made um, table with all my tooling and chucks and everything mounted all here where I need them. Yep. This is my 1950s DeWalt radio alarm saw. Um, it's a nine inch saw, which makes buying blades for it very difficult. Um, I typically only use it uh, for cutting dados, so I keep a dado stack installed full time. Okay. This is my Shopsmith Mark V. I have this wall mounted because I only ever use it as a spindle sander or as a drill press. So I have it mounted here and I set up a counterweight system with a 45 pound dumbbell to make it easier to adjust the headstock. This is my mobile workbench. Um, I have an inset in the middle here so that I can place my scroll saw, my miter saw, and my planer in this opening and use the sides for outfeed. Uh, mounted to the side of the mobile workbench, you'll see my hammer organization, which was video one on this channel. This is Bailey. She is a three-year-old Bassador. We got her as a rescue from Alabama. She likes to spend uh, quite a bit of time in the wood shop. Um, I make sure to not run any of the machines or use any paint or lacquer when she is here. Um, I'm assuming that's probably not good for dogs. This is my sanding and finishing corner. Um, so I have sandpapers of different grits. I have sanders of different kinds, planers. And then I have all my stains, glues, and lacquers in here. I have it set up on a thermal switch so that the heat lamp turns on when it gets to 35 degrees and turns off when it gets to 40. That way none of my stuff freezes. This is my wall of tool chests. This is where I keep anything like ratchets, um, sharpening tools, vice grips, box end wrenches, air tools, and corded drills. This is my 10 inch Ryobi drill press mounted on my homemade drill press cabinet. I have a drawer here where I have all the drill bits, um, Forzner bits, and countersinks. I also have extra drill bit indexes and other accessories to the drill press such as vices and such in the cabinet below. And then I have my most used drill bits and Forzner bits up here. This is all of my deep storage. Um, the higher it is on these shelves, the less I use it. So if there's a tool that I use a couple of times a month, it can make it up onto the top shelf, such as the Dremel or the plumbing supplies. This is my 14 inch Harbor Freight bandsaw. It is far from a good bandsaw, but it is also far from a bad bandsaw. It's completely serviceable. This is sawdust. This is my sanding area. Um, this is a 10 inch disc sander that I made myself. It has a one and three quarter horsepower motor, which is horribly overpowered for something like this. So once I get a more appropriate size motor, that will be swapped out. Next to it is my combination belt and disc sander from Harbor Freight. I have never used the disc sander on it, so I can't speak to how good it is at that, but it's a serviceable belt sander. This is my Craftsman 10 inch radio arm saw. This was originally my father's saw. He gave it to me when he moved. It would not fit in his new house, so it made its way here. This is my main cross cutting saw. 
I do have a compound miter saw, but I prefer to do my cross cutting on this. It has more power and also it has a larger cross cutting capacity. This is my corner of misfit tools that don't get a lot of use, but I can't bring myself to get rid of them. This is not actually my tool. This is my father's four and an eighth inch uh, jointer. I needed to borrow it from him to do a couple of projects. As a thank you for doing that, I have replaced the belts and the blades and I've used it exactly twice. This is my homemade forge. Um, it is made out of a propane tank. I don't get a lot of use out of it, but I did just have my house converted from oil to propane heat, so maybe this will be easier to use in the future. This is a Craftsman Power Hacksaw. It has very little utility for me, but I think it's incredible and I keep it around even though it takes up a lot of space that I don't have. This is my 12 inch Craftsman bandsaw. This has gotten a lot less use since I got the second bandsaw from Harbor Freight, but I still get enough use out of it that I want to keep it around. I keep a thinner blade on it all the time so that I use it for more intricate work. So one thing that I'm really struggling with in this wood shop is dust collection. I have two methods that I currently use for dealing with dust. One being my shop vac cart, which just runs into a dust separator. The second being this Grizzly air purifier. Since I got this, the air quality in this room has gotten a lot better, but there's still things that I can do and that will be future projects to plumb in a dust collection system for this entire shop. And that covers most of the stuff. I did leave out a couple of things like the air compressor and the blacksmith cart, but we'll get to those at a later date. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with new projects that we're doing. And thank you for watching. This. This. <laughs> this. My life. <laughs> <laughs> this is my 10 inch. Oh, hi, Bailey, girl. <laughs> You go, you go away, you're ruining the take. You are. You ruin all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we still rolling? Yep. All right, cool.